is a Wild Wednesday on the Jeff Dubay Show. We are live at O'Gara's. Wednesday for us, of whatever day it listens, uh, you like to listen for you. Beauty of a podcast. Lots to talk about in the world of uh, our local uh, NHL squad. Uh, last night, actually two nights ago, uh, regulation loss, uh, the loss of the worst kind to the Vancouver Canucks on the road. Tonight they have the Calgary Flames. Uh, gentlemen, uh, not to go uh, right into the into, into being critical, Tony Dean, Scotch White, Jason McGovern here, by the way, along with Jeff Dubay. But I thought that game was without a doubt the worst that they've played since the streak started. Uh, I mean, that until they did, until they fell down three to one, that team did not generate any offense, not, or sustain any offense. That uh, that that was one line in that game that that competed and and was difference making, and then the rest of the lines were just unbelievably absent. Yeah. Uh, you you get a Charlie Coyle centered line with Nino Niederreiter and uh, Jordan Schrader. And what you get out of it is Jordan Schrader uses his speed, uses his separation, creates a, a goal yep. on the first one. And then uh, Jordan Schrader and Charlie Coyle um, outwork outwork the, the, the team, and they, they find Nino Niederreiter again right on the doorstep. He flipped one to him, and, and Nino was firing, which is a great sign because you lose Zucker, you have to replace the scoring, and, and you get it out of Nino Niederreiter. You get nothing out of that top line. I thought the Vanek, uh, the Vanek Granlin, Fontaine line is just a terrible match. Uh, really, what you need if you're going to have a line like that, you're going to need Fontaine to play out of his mind, and that that line is just too small, too finesse. Um, you just don't get enough out of Vanek, and, and uh, they got banged on all night by Vancouver. I mean, well, they that, did get a breakaway. They did have a breakaway opportunity. Fontaine, nice pass off the boards. Uh, caught Vanek behind the D. I mean, they did have an sure. opportunity. And Vanek, and Vanek uh, legitimately wasn't cherry picking. He got knocked down. He, he pops back up. He gets found. By the way, that was ridiculous. There was no penalty on that. Play. I agree. I mean, yeah, I mean, I it's one thing that it's anybody who watches hockey. It's one thing to if you're a defenseman, you can you can tap somebody with your stick. You know, tap them on the thigh, tap them whatever. But that guy was that guy was pounding on him, and yep. that affected his shot. And yep. and he was visibly angry when Vanek was visibly angry oh, yeah. when he went to the bench, yeah. and rightfully so. I mean, the officiating once again, and I know we're this is kind of you know beating the the empty drum here, but the officiating once again was bad. It was bad a few games I saw at home, and it it, it just is it's it's just absolutely ridiculous that uh, it continues to happen. You know, to the wild, and I I don't see it. Granted, I've, I'm not watching national coverage you know of other teams like you know to see if there is this sort of like uh degree of bias <laughs> like i see it with our team but um i don't know i mean it was just it was it was pretty bad uh i mean for instance not to go back far but the there was a koivu penalty um and for uh, for diving when he got basically the embellishment yeah, yeah. Embe- yeah. embellishment yeah. against the boards and he got cross-checked In the home game into the boards the carolina and, game right correct yeah um and you want to know the kicker of that is they don't blow the whistle when we have the puck, and yeah, that doesn't make sense. And, and exactly, and 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 yeah. Doobie Doo is in the bench, and we got an extra guy. What if we score? Yeah, then seriously. What? That's then what point. happens? That is a good question. Who who answers? Because you know what happens then? They can't call yeah. the second penalty because they'd have egg on their face. Yeah, you're like, right. Oh, you're wait right. a minute. You should call. You should have blew the whistle instantly if it was on both sides. You're right. So I mean, it, where's the answer to that? Like, well, that know? that also, that ultimately shows that just that that they they had no idea what what the situation was and how they were going to handle it and and as a result i mean it's just unbelievable that 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 that's what takes place is you you call an embellishing penalty after it's a delayed power play like there, there's just no chance that should happen how do you embellish getting cross-checked into the yes. boards i mean was it his was his fall too dramatic i mean you, you got your skates taken out because somebody two hands stick you on the numbers that's well, do you guys have a problem with that penalty in general I mean, that, I don't like embellish either. You, cause, okay, cause I don't like it go both ways. But here's the, oh, exactly because if, if I got tripped and, and I fell, and, or if I didn't get tripped but I fell down, I took myself out of the play, so I've already been penalized. Like I don't understand if I fake a trip but go like how I don't understand what where the integrity in the game is being fucked with if I fall down and you think it, and, and fake a trip like how they're, they're trying the embellishment thing is basically to 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 call out players that have been have been you know. Uh, you know, uh, 
habitual offenders of the sure. diving. I mean, sure. there's there's players out there that have been known. Burrows. I mean, that, that, are, that are you de by definition taking yourself out of a play if you I dive? I don't mind the penalty for embellishment. I don't get giving a guy a penalty for tripping and a guy embellishing. Did he trip him or didn't he? If he tripped him, he didn't embellish. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't understand one, it yes. going both ways. Well, that's yeah. what I mean. I mean, it, I, I, you, I, I, you can call the guy for embellishment, but don't give the other guy a penalty then. That's like because a, the other guy didn't do anything. Was it an excessive? I mean, did he he's just trying to sell it more because he was tripped and you like, puts his arms up and tries to, is that... that that's that, what they're well, saying. My point is, like, if you watch that play, you can't embellish getting cross-checked into the boards like right, that. I mean, right. like, and, I don't care. Anybody have has some graceful body control that they can, like, you know, do a body roll and put their arms up in slow motion to show, like, oh, I've been hitting through. I mean, you don't have the frame of mind to do that, like, in an instant. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there's not... There, there's definitely instances where they're, they're fishing for a penalty. Guy drops a stick. Guy makes sure you know that the cane penalty at the blue line the other night w w that cost the the wow the game against the Blackhawks. I think you could call an em embellishment there and then even it up. Um, I, I guess what that call comes off as as it, it comes off as as a referee flexing his ego, being emotional, and, and they're an NF they're an NHL official. I mean, th th that's just not what you should get from them. And, and that's where the human element goes wrong when there's no oversight. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of politics in the NHL. I mean, if you look at who gets suspended for what hits, if you if you look at when there's outrage, when there's not outrage. I mean, there's no outrage over Keith Ballard, but there there's just an unbelievable. I can't believe this happened to Tyler Sagan, and and that goes with you know the star players and the politics of hockey. I mean, that's the, that's the reality of of the league. You know, the, the thing that the thing that hurt my heart about that Vancouver loss is that that Vancouver team is not good. That Vancouver team is 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 bound to melt and and fall out of playoff contention. And we gave away the first game of this road trip with it looked like effort again, man. It really looked like effort because that the top line got outworked. They got out hit. I mean, the only sense of urgency was that last. Uh, um, scramble to try to get to try to get the the game evened up. I mean, I love the passion out of Dumba. I love it when he's being aggressive. He punched a Sedin in the back of the head, Good. and Canuck Nation was outraged. <laughs> I mean, get the get out of here. How is it not a penalty? How is it not a penalty for Nino to get hooked on 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 that breakaway opportunity by Sedin all the way down the ice, and then he runs him, and then he ends up on top of him. And there's no penalty called at all. And then people are proud of Sedin for for having a hit. Mm -hmm. He ran, he ran him, and then uh, and then Niederreiter scissored him. He basically like scissored him, scissored his legs, and then wouldn't let him go. They bumped, then, they bumped fronts. And then, well, not like that, but in uh, <laughs> but then he, you but know then, what they did. Yeah, you watch. That's right. <laughs> what was he? He from Switzerland and then uh, Sweden. I mean, a little yeah. little uh, proximity issue there. Maybe they're a little Easy. too close for comfort. It's legal. It's legal now. Hey, let's uh, let's take a first break. It's Wild Wednesday, Jeff Dubay Show. We are live at O'Gara's. Scott Schweitz, Tony Dean, Jeff Dubay, Jason McGovern. We, we we will be right back. You know, folks who've listened to the show, they know that uh, I lived in the Uptown area here, right uh, right down Pleasant Avenue, as a matter of fact. And on the corner of Pleasant Lake is where Uptown Pond is. And I have been here numerous times, had numerous uh, business dealings with them. It's just a nice place with good, honest people. Bob Jacobs and the owner, you run the place. You've always been good to me. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we try. That's, our, that's part of our business. We're here to help people. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so everybody walks in the door. We hope we can help. Well, what I, you know what I've always appreciated is uh, when people are nice to people who are the low man on the totem pole. Like when I was a bat boy, I liked the, the star guys who were nice to the bat boy. Right. And I mean, I came in here and you guys didn't know who I was. You didn't know I had a radio show and you right. treated me great. I mean, right. just a guy off the street. Listen, that's the idea with, uh, I think, a smaller family type business. Uh, somebody walks in the door. We don't want to let them see them. See them. Everybody gets treated the same way and we hope that's the case and yeah. we don't want to see them leave without uh, we try our very best to, it's, to it's really easy it's, it's it's easy it's low pressure good honest people right in the corner of lake street and pleasant avenue you guys got to check out uptown pond We are back. It's the uh, Jeff Dubay Show. It's a wild Wednesday. 
Talking about hockey uh, and uh, coming to here to town, the NCHC Frozen Faceoff is coming to the Target Center. It's March 20th and 21st. Now, you've got some fantastic deals out there. If you're coming in from out of town, uh, you know, coming from Grand Forks, coming from Duluth, St. Cloud, wherever, you have coming from Denver, uh, if you go to my Facebook account, my Facebook page, or my Twitter account, you will see a tweet or a, or a post, whichever the case may be, uh, that has a link to hotel rooms. Uh, if, if the NCH has made a nice deal with, with, with Minneapolis, uh, you know, Chamber of Commerce and the area hotels, right in the downtown area there, where you get a good discounted hotel room if you just call up and you say, hey, I'm coming down for the NCHC Frozen Face-Off. March 20th, 21st at the Target Center. It's going to be a great event. they got the Fan Fest. We're going to be broadcasting live, I do believe, from uh, Kieran's. And uh, coming up in consecutive Wednesdays uh, later this month and then into early March, we're going to have some of the coaches from the league on, you know, maybe uh, Dave Hackstar, has been talked about by Motsko, Possibility, Scott Sandlin up in Duluth, these, these kinds of things. So we'll have a chance to, to talk a little college hockey here on Wild Wednesday over the next few weeks. And uh, there's just absolutely no doubt, uh, as much as it pains me to, to, to say this, the Gophers are no longer part of college hockey's most powerful conference. I mean, for years and years and years, the WCHA ruled the roost. And it was good to be the big fish in the big pond, or at least one of them. Uh, but it is, there's no doubt that the NCHC is ruling the college hockey world these days. Four teams in the top ten last time I looked, and uh, the number one team in the nation, the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. It is without a doubt college hockey's premier conference, and it will be, uh, I firmly believe, college hockey's premier uh, conference tournament. So get to the Target Center and check it out, March 20th, 21st. If you want tickets, there are a couple of ways to go about it. Uh, go to TargetCenter.com, uh, go to the Target Center box office, or call 888-9-A-X-S-T-I-X, A-X-S-T-I-X. So that's, uh, and by the way, uh, packages for the whole session, uh, for all four games, start at just 60 bucks. So you can get some good prices and have a good time downtown Minneapolis. That's the NCHC Frozen Faceoff uh, coming to town. Uh, and, I, and I would bet there's an AXS app uh, that you can get those tickets at as well. AXS I've used, I, I don't that? know, but I've gotten tickets from them for something at like Mill City Nights one time. So if uh, get, go get the AXS app, and that would probably be your best way if you got a smartphone to get those tickets. Very what, nice. What a what what a fun conference that is. I've caught a lot of uh, the Miami uh, Red Hawks just because they have uh, they have Louis Belpedio, who's a uh, Minnesota Wild draft pick, uh, former national development uh, team player on, oh, on dude, that team. Miami's a great program, that, elite program. That Riley Barber kid. Enrico it, Blasi. Ry, Riley Barber is so good. That Austin Chernick. I mean, this, that tournament's going to be a fun tournament because St. Cloud State is good right now. Well, they're they're you know they're, they're fighting a little bit. They're they're uh, they have fallen out of the top sixteen of the pairwise, so they got some work to do. Duluth is a top ten team. North Dakota is a top ten team. Um, they, they might. I don't know if I want to say they're the. I mean, North Dakota is the class of that conference right now, but uh, but Duluth is, is certainly a team to reckon with. Miami's a team to reckon with. I've had a lot of people tell me that North Dakota Miami is kind of the game that the, that they're looking to have happen in the finals. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it's a great league. It's extremely deep. I mean, they put it together. When they put it together, they handpicked the teams. They knew what they were doing, and they uh, and they, they made it as strong as they possibly could. Although I maybe in hindsight they maybe wish they would have uh, taken Mankato, but uh, that's uh, you know hindsight twenty twenty. Who, who's the resurgent program in there? Isn't it Western Michigan? Isn't Western Michigan having just an unbelievable season this year? I would year? have to double-check the standings. You just put me on the spot, Tony nice. Dean. I, I'm, I'm ready. I am excited for <laughs> NCHC. A Western Michigan call-out there. That, that's seriously, the first how about, how about that? I want to get in there. Yeah. I want to talk about it. Well, we, uh, we've got, uh, we got NHL to talk about right now with the Minnesota Wild. Uh, guys, a week ago, actually, uh, I don't know if it started a week ago or two weeks ago, um, I, I just I started proclaiming that I really am confident this team will make the playoffs. I still am pretty confident, uh, and, and, and you know, despite the loss last night, they're still only a couple points out, two three points out. And the uh, the most interesting element of this of this playoff race, when you look at the Western Conference standings, the, uh, the the three teams that are just on the outside each have, I believe, three games in hand on the two teams that are just on the inside. Oh yeah, so it's a, it's an interesting little juxtaposition. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just had the standings. Let me grab it here again, real quickly. But uh, you, you've got you know you've got right there. So, so you, you see what I'm talking about? The three teams that are just on the outside. Do they not each have three in hand on the two teams that are in the eight, nine, uh, seven, eight seed? Yeah, I mean, us, yes. us Dallas and Colorado. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a, a differentiation of points. I mean, only, only four points are are the uh, you know uh, are the spread between us, and then above us, you not only have you know L.A. who just who just jumped, you know, uh, you know, uh, leapfrogged us uh, the other night. You got San Jose, which we have we have a few games in hand on, and uh, I think actually we have three games in hand on San Jose, only three points behind them. But then right above them, Calgary, Vancouver at 67 apiece. So there's a there's a big, um, you know, a big spread here where you know you only have eight points separating Vancouver from Colorado, and that's seven teams. I mean, seven teams at eight points. I mean, that could change in a matter of a few nights. 
Yeah, no, it's tight. It's tight right now, Tony. And that also means that, that means you have to win games in regulation. You can't give yep. teams easy points. I mean, a, a lot of what we saw with the point system last year is that teams teams were backing into the playoffs, just making sure that they get that one point. You know, there wasn't a lot of contention in overtime. A lot of teams were trying to get to the shootout. I mean, Dal- uh, Dallas, you know, if they get Sagan back, they have a great shootout lineup. Chicago has a great shootout lineup. St. Louis has Ter- Tarasenko, who's just unbelievable. Plus, you got Oshi, Captain Captain America shootout team. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't you can't let these teams off the hook. You can't have no sense of urgency until the, you're either trying to fight your way back into it or a team comes back on you, man. The, the, tonight, right? This Calgary team is ahead of us in the standings. They're getting back possibly uh, the Sam Bennett kid who's who's a high draft pick. Um, you got Monahan, their top pair. One of them one of them's going to be a contender for uh, the best uh, defenseman award um, in the league. And the and the other guy is super solid. I mean this this Calgary team is it's it, it's no longer full rebuild. They even, they got the Johnny Hockey kid. He's fun to watch. I mean they they're playing good hockey out there and they've changed the way the the Pacific Division lines up so you know i i don't have faith in vancouver to to stick around in the playoffs but you have the kings you have san jose lurking you, you always have anaheim in there and you're battling it out where you're you're six points behind the jets who they lost matthew perot today but there's they still added at the trade deadline they added so that they can keep buffling on the blue line they added the myers kid who is really talented and he's a big kid and he adds offense and they got rid of kane who was done for the season anyways, you weren't even going to get anything from him. I mean, th- that trade really signaled something. In, oh, Stafford in, made an impact right away. Yeah. I mean, he scored a couple of big goals, did he not? In the, in the, and they're come from behind, uh, multiple come from behind uh, rally victory. And he, and he scored a shootout goal, basically, uh, to yeah. get uh, you know to get him that second point. So, I mean, yeah. that, that's another big one. And to look, I mean, another team I was going to bring up is the Sharks. You know, the Sharks have lost uh, three of four. They stole a point, uh, you know, from the caps in an OT but I mean they they're ones that I don't know what the the recipe is for San Jose to, to be successful but they just can't seem to put it together where they're you know they're they're losing it as you know scores of five to two and five to one their past two games now they've got an outdoor game coming up with LA stadium series correct coming up correct. on the 21st that's correct. a very serious playoff implication game and it's going to be played outdoor now this is my problem with outdoor games I mean, I, I get it. They're cute. They're promotional. It gets people's attention. People watch it. Blah blah blah. But it's shitty hockey. It's typically it's typically substandard ice. It's typically very defensive minded. It's typically won on a goofy bounce. I mean, these are not quality hockey games. And that is a playoff implication game. That's two bubble teams well, playing I mean, in, a, in a in a in a showcase bullshit kind of game. Not just that, but I mean, and I hate a, those that's games. A, that's I a really playoff do. implication game that's played in California. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. one thing if you're playing it here where it's you know what is it? It's thirty below. I mean, with, with how, do chill, do I mean, how do they do it out there? By the way. Uh, well, it's all it's the magical ice that you know the, the they synthetic? have the, the freon the underneath it it's not synthetic it's I think, not synthetic it's real ice i think it's real ice and it has the, the free the coolant underneath yeah. it yeah i think okay. they got the cooler system if it's like 65 degrees or less they can do it something like it's that. not ridiculous but i mean yeah. the point being is that how do you how do you play hockey out there i mean it's 65 degrees i mean sure. i played in all that gear and I, you, you sweat your ass off inside the yeah. ice box yeah. you know like back in harding and aldridge it's exactly it's, I mean, how, how do you think you're gonna play when it's that hot outside I yeah mean, I mean, there's there's like health issues that you might want to worry about with with Hydration, overheating. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, but so before that though, two days prior, they also play the Stars. I mean, another big game that any of these go into three point situation games. They have a you know a, a detrimental effect on the Wild's chances of, of making the postseason. All right, let's talk let's talk more about the squad right now. Um, on the positive side, uh, and I've taken shots at the kid uh, numerous times because of. Uh, I just didn't like what I saw out of him in his, in his U of M career and what he gave to the squad. But Jordan Schrader's giving the team something right now. Uh, he's, he's, he, you see the speed, you see the burst. He's giving, he's giving a, a Zucker replacement. That's what of. I'm saying. I mean, That's what I'm saying. I said that. As a matter of fact, I said that yesterday with Nick Peters on the show. That he, he, I mean, he doesn't play. He doesn't kill penalties like Zucker does. He doesn't give you stuff in the defensive zone the way Zucker has been, you know, finally, you know, schooled to do. But offensively, he he does make up for some of what you lose in Zucker. But that burst, with that offense, not I mean, as he's, not as flashy. No, but. no. But he does see, he he does see the ice well. He he supports the puck. He's he's always he always seems to be where he needs to be. You know, to, to, in the offensive zone. He, I mean, he, he he thinks and plays a good offensive game. Certainly, certainly, what he's shown the the importance of creating separation. I I think that 
a lot of a lot of what we haven't seen um, dangerous uh, plays from Vanek this year are because he doesn't create a lot of separation. I think the th- that the angle that Schrader adds, and even even the kid that they called up today, the Michael Coranin kid, who uh, is a friend of uh, Granlin, they they were in the Finnish Army together. Um, he was the leading scorer in the Finnish league a year ago. He's he's the second leading scorer for the Baby Wild. They they call up these two, and then if you can mix them in with the other guys that are bigger, that are better at possession, that that might lack a little bit of speed, a little bit of puck handle. If if Yo can mix in these lines, then you find it where you have Charlie Coyle and you have Nino Niederreiter on a line with Jordan Schrader, and it's the it's the best line on your team. Hey, knowing uh, you know that uh, you guys are not big Prosser fans, I get it. I mean, Prosser, he's a very, very, you know, I don't want to say middle of the road defenseman. He's a, he's worse than a middle of the road defenseman, despite the fact he's been playing well lately. I had I had to thank you guys both uh, when he scored that goal the other night <laughs> because Vanek hit him on a, on a gorgeous back door, and you can tell Prosser all of a sudden he's got the puck, stares straight at the goaltender, he's ten feet out, and he shits his pants. What do I, mean, I do? He's like, what the fuck? How did I get here? And he tries to go back door to Grandland and puts it in out of a, of a defenseman. I mean, I, I I just pictured both you guys laughing your asses off at that. I mean, it was as unskilled a goal as you're ever going to see a guy score. <laughs> it was right in front of me. Oh God! It was right. I was like, it was, uh, it was absolute I, I, read, I had to roll my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> my, and I, you know what exactly I thought of when that happened? I'm like, I'm gonna have to hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just like, it's just the like, Brad, yeah. just like when Bronzyak scores. The I, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I, like, I'm gonna have to hear about this. I'm oh, like, but it was as soon garbage. as I start bashing people, they're ah, they're scoring. It actually, was garbage though. Oh, was it garbage? I saw his uh, actually his family was there. His his wife, his parents, and his his two little shorties with uh, 39 jerseys that had daddy oh, cool. on it. Very cool. So. They got the, He's they been got, playing better. You have they, to admit. They score a goal in front of the fam. I mean, well, along those lines, what do you think the chances are uh, that they get anything out of Ballard this year? And, and, and how much does it matter? I, I Duba's been playing well. Why, been why playing would you well. bring him back? No, I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you bring Ballard back. I mean, as is having to having to have three goaltenders on the roster is making it very tough for them to maneuver cap wise, and and for them to be able to do anything with with calling a guy up, you know, scratching a guy. Just, just like what, what, what makes it tough is when you, when you carry Backstrom and you know you're going to buy him out next year and, and he has a no-move clause so you can't even send him down for anything or, or you can't move him in a trade, then it, it puts pressure on Fletcher. You know, we look at uh, Nashville and the Jets made trades and Nashville got Cody Franzen back and he's a 6'5 guy to play uh, top four minutes and they got Mike Santarelli back who is an upgrade completely over Ole Jokinen and they got 84 points and probably the best goaltender in hockey and, and that's in division. Well, listening to Russo the other day uh, uh, in between periods on, on, on FSN. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, listening to him on FSN, he was talking about the, uh, the, the, the market, the trade market and that really there's, there's quite a few rent players available out there but that it's, it is a seller's market right now and that, that they're really asking too much. I mean, is there, is there anybody out there that, that, that you guys look at and you, you want them to act on or think they should or need to act on? You, uh, and how, how far do you go? I mean, that, well, the, I, I, it's, you, have to, you have to proceed extremely cautious because, I mean, what if you do become a buyer and it doesn't happen, then where are you sitting? I mean, you, you've just bought a rental player for no apparent reason. Yeah, I mean, you, you better make the playoffs. You'd have to. You better any make player, the playoffs. Any player, and I've read this on multiple sources, and any player you're going to get, is not going to be a rental. It's going to be something that you're going to at least have to have the option of extending. It's like a pommel. Well, the, yeah. so, so the two top guys in the market right now, Antoine Vermette and uh, Sakara uh, from Carolina, they're both uh, rentals. They're both uh, one's uh, Sakara is in he's like 28, but Vermette's like 32. And so both of these guys are unrestricted free agents this summer. Both of these guys are are considered to be the top two. Um, available, known available in the, in the trade market. Both of them will probably could come in here and serve a role. Like you know, Vermette could come in. He he could uh, play the center position. Maybe that bails out Howla. He can play in the wing, use his speed. Um, you know, the other thing is Granlin hasn't been good. Granlin hasn't been good. Granlin hasn't been a top center. He hasn't had top center production. He's gotten beaten up. A lot of teams focus on him and uh, Brodeen and, and Spurgeon like like Colorado did in the first round, and they just pound the crap out of those guys. And, and you know, those are tough kids, and they withstand it, but it it, it, it costs them effectiveness. It costs them production. The the Sakara would, would be a huge upgrade to maybe the third pair, and then you play them on the left side of Dumba and Folan, and I think that you would have a, a great uh, three pairings, but 
uh, ultimately, what you're going to have to give for them, you're, you're looking at uh, a prospect that's ready now, probably a first. I mean, it's un- it's unbelievable what the price tag is for either one of those players. You know, the, the one guy, um, all the hockey nerds, according to uh, Brian Reynolds, who can suck it. Uh, I was waiting for it. Yes. He knows. He knows. Um, the, the, the guy that all the hockey nerds um, have talked about is Sean Bergenheim, and Bergenheim is uh, the one that's been – um, in the press box, and he, he's the one that's been uh, talked about as uh, his agent has requested a trade, and, and when, they, when they put his numbers and his effectiveness, he could slot in very well in the top nine for the Wild, be very effective. He's never been a, a, a total goal scorer, but I think that he would uh, shelter a Granlin a little bit. He would go out there and he would work. He would play in both ends, and he's a guy that, that Mike Yo would... would uh, he, he would empower him rather than hide him like we did with Molson last year. So uh, I, I got a little sidetracked with yeah. all Brian Reynolds. No, I, don't, I mean, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Scott knew that was coming. He goes, there it is. Oh, I, 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 watch, I watch it, man. It's just toxic, toxic exchanges back and forth. And well, that, not really back and forth because what, what I've learned is you, you should just never acknowledge a guy that, that's going to be a tough guy on the interwebs or he's going to look for attention. And especially like, dude, why don't you go boot his car? Or something? Well, you know what Get it is. Towed. He's like forty-five years old, and his life 45. sucks. So, so <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm, I'm forty-seven, so, and my life sucks. No, but it's Back different. Off. People, people seek you out. Hey, Nobody man. seeks him out, and because car. they don't seek him out, then he wants attention from people, and that's what I've decided. So he's he's the coolest guy ever. He's best friends with everybody. They have their twi- private Twitter <laughs> conversations. Nobody cares, oh, boy, sir. You're not going to hear anything. Nobody cares. You're not, not going to hear anything on Twitter. He does, he does get responses from, like, Russo and Chad Graff. And the, the, recently? I, mean, I don't think he tags he, them. I don't think he has recently. Well, but, 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 because I mean, he's but been we're, but we're talking about, toxic. We're, talking, we're about talking about him right now, so maybe we should just stop talking about him. <laughs> yes. So, that, that's your shine, sir. <laughs> There's your he's response. Winning. Oh, Tony, oh, Tony. Well, like oh. A, you're an officer. Go get him towed. You know? no, he doesn't need my help to be... Miserable. Where he is in his life. All right, I'm, Congratulations. I'm, 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 tra- I'm transitioning conversation. So <laughs> let's go back to the trade. Hey, hey, Tony, do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? Yeah, those are Western Ruffs. Let's go back to the trade bit. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, who knows what kind of you know magic uh, Fletcher can possibly work. But, I mean, all the people we just mentioned, I don't, I don't personally think unless you can extend them or the cost is not going to be as high. Like, I don't, I don't feel that they are that desirable. I no. mean, I, I don't think that above and beyond what we have on our squad – I don't want to go out and spend draft picks and prospects in, in, a, in, in some kind of hope. Now, especially considering the stuff we've given up has been, you know, we've given up draft pick for, you know, Dubnik. We've given up, uh, you know, a draft pick uh, last year, you know, uh, a, uh, a fourth rounder. So it, it, I, I think, I mean, what is even remaining on our uh, – on our draft, uh, you know, picks for this upcoming. Yeah, sure. They're it's definitely thin. low. They're it's definitely thin. Low. And these and these guys aren't impact. These aren't yeah, impact what I mean. players. If you're gonna if you're gonna make a, I get you. if you're gonna, and I don't want, I'm not calling for a blockbuster, but if you're gonna do something and you're gonna package something together, I want it to be impactful. Not only now, but for the next, you know, for the next uh, foreseeable two three years. I mean, something that we're gonna actually, because this is, I mean, let's face facts. This is not our year. We started out slow. I mean, if we creep into the playoffs. We could be some Cinderella story. I'm not going to call that. But there's still pieces that need to be fixed. And when we shed some fat in the off season and shed some dollars and have the money to, to do what we need to do, I don't think there's any reason to rush now unless it's going to be something that's in the equation next year. And, and with, the, with, this, with this current crop of allegedly available players... It's probably the worst I've seen in five years. Yeah, I mean, so, so you don't, I mean, I, want, I don't go over and overspend. I mean, but if you can pack some together against a, an Edmonton or something else that's, you know, that's garbage out there and, uh, you know, teams that are, that are constantly being bottom dwellers and, I mean, then get something that's worthwhile. But until that happens, then I'm not, don't, don't. Do something for the sake of doing something. Maybe right. find maybe right. find a way to dump Zach Phillips on somebody for somebody. Like, because you pull know, the, pull let, the wool over their let, eyes and be like, just, he's really good. I, I wrote I wrote about it. Uh, I wrote about Alex Tuke. I wrote about uh, Lucia. Isn't, and, it, isn't it Tuck? Uh, Tuke Tuck. You know, depending. I've heard the tomato. I thought the other guy's name was Kiernan. Yeah. Right. So I wrote I wrote about uh, Phillips being just the most disappointing draft pick. Phillips, we agree on since AJ Thelen. Oh, speaking of Michigan, <laughs> yeah. hey, we're bringing it State. back. Michigan State. Oh, Michigan Spartans. State. Which yeah, is Michigan just State. brutal. I mean, uh, fourth overall pick, I think. Hey, you know, really that or, no, no, maybe it's 12th. It was 12th overall. He's married to a smoke show, though. 
Oh, really? sure. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. And he's from Prior Lake, too. So it's, yeah. like, it's not like he has a bad <laughs> life. I mean, no, he's, no, she, she's you know, a he's living the dream. Legitimate smoke show. Yeah, well, good for him. Good for him. Uh, I, I was wondering, I'm not to second guess, and I'm not going to put anything on, on Dubnik, but I, 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 he does look like he might be getting a little tired. Are you surprised they didn't give him a night off against either Florida or Carolina at home? I thought those were the opportunities. Why, why wouldn't you give him a night off? I don't why, know why. why wouldn't you get Darcy Kemper back in here? At home against an Eastern Conference non-playoff team. I, that, to me, those are the chances. Why, I, why, not, why not get him functional? So now when do you play him? You play him in Edmonton? That's almost saying that you don't trust him more than you don't trust him. I mean, well, but here's the thing. It's, it's more than just that. I think if <clears throat> you have to counterbalance the, uh, the effects of not only the goaltender, but what the ripple effect of changing the goaltender will do to your squad because you've clearly established a confidence across your entire team with that guy between the posts. You put in the guy that people don't trust, is that going to affect the play? Is it going to, it, like in the Carolina game, for instance, we were up 3 nothing, mm-hmm. up 3-1, up 4-1, and all of a sudden they start creeping back into this, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 4-3, and you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, what's happening? Right. And, right. I mean, if you have somebody else behind, between the posts, that game is played that, differently, isn't correct. it? Correct. It might not be a six to three game at the end. It might be a, yeah, a six to five loss. But when they're creeping back in, I, and, I, and I was against you on this whole confidence thing, but I think you, you nailed Damn it. Damn right, I did. You really did. And that that this I know in my a shit. game like that. Props. Props. They, exactly. In a game like that, it's very easy to go, oh, shit, here they come. Woe is me. But they went, no, I mean, they'll all no, go, we can stick in there. They'll all go straight Eeyore, and they'll be like, no, we're going to lose the game. Well, but, well flip, <laughs> flip, 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 side is, flip side is, I mean, Dubnik's last two games, other, other than the game he got pulled in Detroit, which I still think was a kind of a fluky game with a lot of bad bounces, uh, that game aside, the last two games have been his worst, too, as a member of the Wild. I mean, he, he, he looks a little tired. No, he, he, might he still Kemper, looks as Kemper, good Kemper, as Kemper, 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 right? Kemper might have just stood in and played a solid game, and it might have stayed 4-1. to one. On, the, on the flip side, though, why not give Kemper a shot to get back in the mix, I give agree. him a little confidence? He should have played at because, home last week. Because now, now you're staring down, what, 11, 12, 13 games in a row for Dubnik? And not easy games, right? And, and so he captured he should, the He magic. should play at Edmonton. He should play at Edmonton on Friday. Like yeah. He, he yeah, should play yeah. on Friday yeah, you could. at but, Edmonton. But that is a, that is a team that is worse but that home stand Carolina would have been a good time and, too. But so oh, Florida, what? But yeah. if you if you play him against Edmonton, aren't you just shitting on him's confidence? Like you, At least you, you waited, play him. You waited him. fourteen games. Fourteen games. You mean on Kemper's play? confidence? Yes. Do we have any confidence in him? Does anyone believe you that gotta, the Wild have confidence in him? I, I don't think you're lying to him I have by more, throwing him in Edmonton. But I have more confidence in Kemper than I do in Backstrom. So if I, Backstrom's going to be yeah. if Backstrom's going to be completely out, be then you that. have to bring this kid back in. Of course. So that it's, what what if De, what if Dubnik gets hurt? What if, what if Devin Dubnik gets gets destroyed like Victor Fast in that in that and shootout we break, we break blows up. out his uh, sports groin his sports hernia and sports then groin. and then oh, yeah. <laughs> as opposed right. to the uh, the normal day well, groin it is a little different than the sex groin <laughs> yes. what kind of groin you got yeah, yeah, another groin I myself nice. have a sport groin that's me nice <laughs> so so what Dubnik gets hurt then Over. then you're Golf back clubs. to what. You're you got, back to Darcy, you're man. You're shining up the golf club you're you're exactly the right. at that point. That's you're it. looking to you play all the kids. You get ready to go. <laughs> you go the whole the other, the other nine thing yards. Is, the, other, we're toxic the other thing is, every game from here on out is going to matter, right? If if you don't build Darcy back up, you're going to have to use him at some point in a game that matters, whether it's a playoff game, whether it's the last week of the season, whatever it is. Wouldn't you rather lose the one now but, but get this kid back in the mix? I mean, come yeah, on. Against Edmonton. Hey, uh, b- before we head to break here, I mean, we are we are at O'Gara's, and it is uh, it, it's it's Lent now officially, isn't it, Scott? You're Catholic. Fish fry, baby. Yeah, you're doing you're doing the all you can eat fish fry. Plug, go ahead and plug O'Gara's. Damn right, bit. it's good. It's actually, I'll be honest, it's it's one of the better fish fries I've had. I do the circuit. It looks good. I do the circuit around the town, and the other ones I will give love. You circuit to. fish fry. I'm a circuit well, fish fry. Catholic, man. And well, you got to find the good ones. I well, mean, in the yeah. Irish bars, I mean, they're going to have all the Catholics that you think they'd be on top of that. Correct, and the uh, churches are good for that too. But another bar in St. Paul that has damn good fish fry, if you're into fish fry, is Tiff's. Because it's like a Summit beer-battered fish fry. Oh, wow. And it is real good. I mean, if... Well, way to plug somebody else. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> I'm saying, I was the whole point was to hey, plug the sponsor. Hey, free show. It's a free yeah. show, Dogaris. It's, it's all good. We can yeah, plug so Tiff's plug too. No, but my point is, like, I'm impressed with this. Like, it takes a lot for me to actually say this is good fish fry. It looks good. There's, no fish, fry that, there's no fish fry that matches this on 7th Street. I'm, you, I'm kind of hungry, and I'm watching people get food all around us, and it's it's tough. And I, of all people, I don't think that Scott Schweitz is going to come out and just and just fluff it, you know, and just be like, oh, no, oh, it's really good because I'm here. I actually think that he's cuddable on that one. I mean, it's meaty. It's not like He's a giver, so I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm, he just ordered. He just ordered an a la carte walleye. 
No, no. Did you actually ask for a little more? That's all you can eat. Yeah, I ordered an extra. I thought you ordered an a la carte. No, no, no. He did me one more. I brought him one more out. We'll be back at the final break. Wild Wednesday on the Jeff Dubay Show. Fish fry. Okay, last year, 2013, I'd lived uh, just down the road, Pleasant Avenue, just a few blocks here from Uptown Pond, which is right on the corner of Lake and Pleasant. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of times, you know, you, you just try to get to that next payday, maybe a couple of bucks short. Uh, if you've got some items, jewelry, diamonds, uh, electronics, I mean, you come down here and they give you a fair price for it, and then you come back a week later, two weeks later, whatever, you get it back at a real reasonable price. So we're very competitive, we hope, on, on different angles, in different ends and different articles. Uh, computers, electronics, TVs, mm -hmm. uh, jewelry. Uh, we, we, we buy, we give loans, um, and we also have uh, emphasis on, on diamond jewelry too, uh, that we also try and give credit for the best we can. We are specialists in that area also, so it's an all-round sort of uh, combination. Well, it's a great place. It's a nice, clean place with honest people, and I tell you what, it's got a real family feel to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's tied into Strauss family, and I go way back right. with, with the late, great right. Jerry. So, I mean, right. these are people I know and people I trust. You can find them on Twitter, too, by the way. They're at Uptown Pond, and also on Facebook, Uptown Pond and UptownPond.net. Mm -hmm. Wild Wednesday continues on the Jeff Dubay Show. Yeah, you got sad shoes. I love this song. Now, we got good music on the show. Of course, it's all mine. I wrote all these songs. Yeah, performed at yours. <laughs> yours as in you wrote it, or, yeah, uh, yeah, produced yeah. it, all of it. Yeah, i got to find you some better attorneys then. Uh, check, <laughs> yeah. check, check this out. You can't make that up. Look at the TV above my head. <laughs> just a little inside humor. Puppy. Hey, Tony, wake up. And I just said, hey, crop that quick. Nice. You might want to crop that, that one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make it up. <laughs> oh, God. That'll, that'll I'm not putting that up. We're, we're, <laughs> I, had to take, I had to take a couple of pictures you know, so we, uh, of us doing the show so we could put them up uh, you know, with, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the podcast on Spreaker. You know how you have a little picture of guys doing the show. Yeah. And he gets one with the, with the TV over my head, and the squirrel said something about a failed drug test right above my head. You can't, you can't make <laughs> it up. Too good. You can't make it up. I just oh. appreciate it. Don't take a picture of stuff in my in my pie hole full of fried fish. No, I think he took the pictures when you were talking because you're pointing. So. I, like it. I get into that. I yeah. think I got it from him. I like it. I like it when when Scott gets to pointing. It's always a good show. That that's what I try to get Scott out of. Scott pointing and you yes, drinking. That's the, Those are the best podcasts that's of all time. Test right there. It's I like, a, I'm like a podcast agitator, is, is, is how it gets down. <laughs> it's a wild Wednesday. We're live at O'Garris. Um, and, of course, you can get the show. If you, if you listen to the show, you know where to get the show. I mean, you get it at jeffdubay.com. You get it at iTunes. You get it at iHeartRadio. Spread the word. Share it, share it. Love it. Tweet it. Retweet it. Whatever. Uh, uh, at O'Garris. It's our first show at O'Garris. I'm not sure that. It is, I think it's just a one-time shop for us, but it's cool to be here. I was hoping to run into Danny. Good, good dude. I just I have not had a chance to go looking for him yet. Uh, check out this guy coming in in a fur coat, dude. Seriously, right behind you. It's fucking weird. Check that out. I'm not saying anything to him. Isn't that weird? <laughs> that, that, that freaks me out, man. He looks out of trash. That's a woman's coat, isn't it? Is that a woman's coat? That, isn't it? I mean, tell me. Do you have it straight up? That's a woman's coat, right? No, I mean, they, they, I'm not going <laughs> to continue to stare at the man. <laughs> it looks like raccoon under... Hey, let's get back. Let's get back. It looks like raccoon hey, under don't, don't, get us, don't, get us, don't get us beat up, dude. He, he might be packed. All right. Anyway, let's good thing there's some police here. Ah, back to the uh, back to the show. Back to Wild Wednesday. It's Jeff <laughs> DeBay's show. Uh, guys, I know that things are a little disjointed uh, in the lineup right now. You got some, you got some people out. You got some injuries. You got some, uh, you got, you got some guys down. So, so the, you cannot have the ideal line combinations. You can't put together, uh, you know, the, the way you had it, you know, three weeks ago when uh, you just, you know, and, and you know, the kind of guy. Uh, when when things are a little disjointed like they are right now, he can't get through a single game with the same line combinations. I mean, he's juggling throughout. Uh, so it's kind of a two-part topic here. Number one, what do you think of constantly changing and dabbling? So I, I like guys to build chemistry. I mean, I like to put lines together and keep them together. I don't like a lot of shifting around in, in game like that. And, and secondly, what do you think are the kind of combinations you could go forward with and win with and, and, and stay together with uh, with, the, with with your lineup being a little shorthanded right now? I, I, I think Yo always defaults to Koivu, Parise, Pominville. And all of those guys are talented, um, but they tend to not get it done, and it also kind of hurts the lineup with regard to um, other guys needing maybe Pominville or Parise to play with them. You know, the, the Grandland Vanek uh, Fontaine line was brutal. I, I'm hoping to see that switched up. Uh, 
he captured a little bit of magic there with Co- uh, with Coil, Nino, and and uh, and Schroeder. So now, if Van Traitor. 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 Schroeder's a Peanuts character. Nice. I I think if if Vanek's not going to piano, Correct. if Vanek's got not going to play tonight, I think you you have to definitely mix up the uh, the lines. I'm hoping that Koivu plays with uh, with Nino and maybe Coil because I I think that they're really good together. Uh, Trader can play center. You, uh, Howla can play center. You know the if the, if the fourth line's going to have Vayu on it and Brodziak and and you you talk about how they're special penalty killers. Then, then maybe they don't need to play very much unless we're on the penalty kill. And then you, you just have three strong lines. You roll them. You mix in some speed. Well, you know, Lepanta brought up something that Yo said the other night, and it did, it did make some sense to me. I know you're gonna, you're probably gonna dismiss it as an excuse, but he's a little hesitant to put younger guys with established guys because younger guys defer too much. And I, I can see that. I mean, yeah. if you put, if you, you put a kid like, uh, well, let's, let's like if you put a kid like Zucker, although Zucker's a brash, uh, confident well, kind of he was, guy. He was talking about Nino. Every time Nino got elevated into the top six, every time Nino was playing top six minutes with uh, with uh, Parise or, or Koivu or Pominville, he was he was looking to pass, and, mm-hmm. and he wasn't as aggressive, and, and then you didn't get some of the scoring. You didn't get some of the opportunities out of it, and I, I think that that's completely relevant. But I also think that... You have you have to find a way to to get Granlin going because Go- Granlin's just been he's just been absent with his production. I mean, th- he's a special player, but he's also a guy that um, he he has what like eighteen points. I mean, that's that's your top line center. If if Koivu's not the top line center, a lot of people always just said argue that. Point. Maybe some weird shit going on in Finland last summer because all three of the guys have just kind of been. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Koivu, you know what? I'll be the, I mean, first, person. Be I'll be the, the first person to say, like, Koivu, I think, has played better as oh, yeah, late. Absolutely. Um, and and you're has, not the first. He has elevated his game. And I will, uh, uh, I don't think that he does as well as he would on, if he was in the second line. Like, think of, you say, like, rookies or, or younger guys. Zucker played fabulous on that line with Koivu and Vanek. I mean, that was, mm-hmm. they caught some lightning in a bottle with that line. So you remove Zucker from that. And could you possibly fill back in uh, a Fontaine or a or a, or Schrader? I mean, if I mean, maybe even more so Schrader with I the speed. Schrader, and although Schrader's and Schrader and Zucker are righty lefty, they're, they're not the same. Okay, so but. I mean, so so point being is you, you have like the the characteristics of the player. I mean, right handed, left handed, obviously is an important piece, but I think more so is just the the characteristic of the player in the dynamic that they need to fit in. So if you're going to take out a person that is got speed, likes to shoot, likes to do this, I mean, likes to do that kind of stuff. You need to replace it with that kind of a, a character player. I agree. As and I, I don't get that wrapped up in righty lefty. Do you? No, no. I mean, I don't think it's important because once you're once you're oh. past the face off, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah, and you're buzzing I'm around like I'm fighter jets. I'm I mean, it's it's a, unless that's like a power play thing, right? Isn't that where that matters when you're setting up? The- I, I personally like having guys play off wing. I mean, they come in with a better shooting angle when you come when you cut across the blue line. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I like it. And so I mean, and, and Nino's a perfect example of one that he loves to cut back and go from the yeah. the backhand to forehand and then snipe the puck. I mean it. And, and when he pulls it back, I mean, they've talked about it time and time again. I mean, he's loading up the stick, and he's getting a few more feet of, yeah. you know, of uh, bending that twig, and, oh, and, and he's going to be able to fire it off. Using the defenseman as a screen. I mean, sure. when you're coming in on the off wing, there's a lot more you can do offensively. And, and I think it's more important with when you talk about defensemen. If you're on a, if you're on a right or left-handed defenseman, I think it is more important mm-hmm. because to play an off-handed defenseman um, or an off-handed position as a defenseman, you're going to have to – be able to retrieve the puck with your backhand and flip it to your forehand quickly. And if you screw that up, if it pops your stick, if something else, the puck's behind you, and so is everybody else. I mean, and that's why I think that's. I mean, playing that position, I know from from experience. If I've had to play an off, you know, an off uh, righty lefty position, it's difficult. It's I mean, more to think about than you need. Well, and right? you're not, and you're not going to be able to it's make more plays. To do. You're going to probably be on your backhand and just have to dump the puck back in, and not not be a quarterback or pass it across or do something else. I mean, it, it, you, it limits your options. So in a perfect world, you have 60, three of each. Well, and so to this point, uh, just recently, I think Russo came out and said that Jonas Brodin is more comfortable playing right def- defender, even though he's left-handed, which which is kind of interesting because you would think he would he would, he would would uh, play better on the left-hand side because that's his forehand, but he's more comfortable over there. Louis Belpedio, the, the, the kid from uh, U- University of Miami, uh, Ohio, who they drafted this year in the third round, 
he's a right-handed defender that plays on the left side, more comfortable there. And I, and I think a lot of it has to do with the, uh, the players' abilities and, the, and their comfort level. But I, I, I think uh, guys that have, we've seen switch back and forth, uh, Zucker is better on the left-hand side. He wants to play left side. He, he's, not a, he's not a right wing. Nino can play left wing. Left wing, but probably likes it better on the right. Let's say it better on the right. And uh, guy, guy like uh, Eric Howla, he was so important for the Gophers during their during their run because they were strong at center. He 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 uh, he got hurt. He could play on the wing. Then he comes back. He could play center. So you know, there's certain guys that can play wing, can play center. Uh, that that that's what makes Chicago so potent because of uh, Hosa and Sharp and, and Kane and Taves. All those guys can switch between the wing and center and be effective. I tell you what, though, when it comes to D, and then it's got again, you you played the position. I, if it was me personally, I would feel more comfortable playing on the offside in my own zone because I feel like I'd have my stick in the passing lane. And I would feel more comfortable playing on the onside, um, the, the strong. I'm, I'm, I'm on the you know if I'm right handed, if I'm left handed, I want to be the lefty in the attack zone. I mean, so I'd want I want it, I want it reversed from and one end will, to the other. Some do flip, does that make some sense? Will do, some will do flip flopping. Um, and another thing is if uh, depending on if you if you got a shooter defenseman in the offensive zone, you want to play your offside because if you get, if you get, the, if you get the pass across, yeah, you, you get the stick in the passing get, lane. You basically can do the one timer, but and you it, want to be on your side for that board play, right? Correct. That's the tough part and on the back, and that's where and that's where it goes into. You know, are you a shooter or are you a defensive defenseman? If you're somebody like a Scandella or somebody that likes to, you know, just rip the shot, I mean, Spurgeon doesn't do as much one timing, you know, as Scandella does. Spurgeon does on his side, on his right side, he'll fire the puck because he can he can paint better when he's a little closer. And you just have to weigh your weigh your skills and determine what's what's more important. But considering the you know we don't have a, an even distribution of righties or lefties on D, I mean, so you have to kind of adapt to what you need to do. And forwards, why they should be versatile? Sometimes maybe it's even a mental thing that they they need or feel more comfortable playing their specific side. I want to I want to rewind a little bit to uh, to early in the show. We're talking about trade deadline, and uh, we talked about the, the thing that you have to be careful of is giving anything up. Go ahead, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, you know, you got to be careful about giving anything up, and then not being a playoff team. You know, it's, it's you, you, you get away, get away uh, from from some of your younger resources, and uh, and all of a sudden you're you're getting the golf clubs out, and it was just all for nothing. But the flip side of that, uh, the, the danger that Chuck Fletcher faces, uh, if he sees teams around him do what Winnipeg did and get better and see immediate impact, well, you do nothing. I mean, that, yeah, that's a, I mean, go to go to the flip side. The, the danger in that certainly the, there'll be an indictment if if he he doesn't make any sort of move to try to supplement this roster and they fall short a couple points and and they get beat by he did make the deal for Dubnik. I mean he's he's got that which which is a, a season saver. It's, it's a season to, saver. We wouldn't be in the position we're in to even talk about this if he hadn't have done that. Yeah, it's so a, he's done. He's, he's probably done enough to not catch too much heat. It's a season Isn't that a little lucky though, too. Like I don't no. think anybody was saying no. this is. Gonna, I mean, no, I don't. No, I mean, you think yes. about skill? I mean, yes, skill. No one. I mean, you nobody get, knew Dubnik was going to do this. Come you, on. Get, you get credit for Dubnik being the savior, but you didn't. You couldn't have foreseen that he would rattle off the stretch that he did. No way. I mean, you what what you were basing Dubnik be the savior on is that. Kemper and Backstrom had been so tr- just atrocious. He would so, be at least a notch better than them. That's so, what he was. So when the trade was made, I was very underwhelmed because Dubnik had been on five teams in two years. Then when he comes in and he's he's done this, it's it's a genius moment. So so calling him the saver, you get credit for it, but you don't expect Dubnik to be a top five goalie or a top ten goalie. And 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 I think what we're seeing is he's coming back to earth. So now it's like what what's the other thing because. It's 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 not a great trade if they miss the playoffs. It, it's it's a good trade, and it's just, and, it, and it was a savvy trade for them to get him out of the desert for a third round pick, which is nothing really in and the I'll, grand scheme of things. I'll give a counterpoint to that, and I will say with the options he had at the time for goaltending, Cam Ward. What yeah. are you going to give up for Cam Ward? Sure. For and for a restricted free agent. Yeah. Uh, you know somebody who who he's. Not all that great, and I think he's in the decline of his career. So, are you going to have you know a Backstrom 2.0 eventually on your hands, or any other aging player that you sign to a contract you shouldn't sign because you need to, and then all of a sudden he continues to decline? Other options: you have the uh, the Buffalo goaltenders that and Roth that basically prior to playing them, we picked up Dubnik, and you know what happened? We lit that guy up like a Christmas tree, mm-hmm. seven goals. So. 
Okay, but he was also he was playing with Buffalo's well, roster. I'm saying okay, but then keep going. Then you got then you got no. goaltenders up in you know up in uh, Edmonton perhaps. I mean, so you, any of these goaltenders yes. are are really no good. I mean, and so you're right. Out of the options he had, you put, that's a pretty damn good choice. And I'll tell you what, sure. and and you Fletcher can get the 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 face of the franchise credit for this stuff, but Fletcher has such great talent evaluation depth in his staff to look at players. Mm. I. I they've, think I think they've so. missed a lot recently. I mean, the last two years he's come up with a veteran goaltender to help dig out of the hole. So if you're talking about just veteran goaltenders, I totally agree with you. If but you're, again, you're not starting the season the right way, right? But, so isn't that a, his fault as well? Well, then also look at look at the trade. So they don't give up a lot. You bring in Matthew Molson, but Matthew Molson was brutal, man. No, no, I agreed, mean, agreed. And, Matthew, I, and I would and, say, and I so, think I think the reason they took a swing with Molson is because. They knew that they had Vanek basically ready to go if they wanted him. Sure. So you know what? Why not take a swing with Molson? Sure. If the guy comes in and he's a dream sure. and basically rips shit up, then you know what? You got Molson and you got Vanek. Sure. So you know what? But you and, still but you still traded for Molson and he contributed nothing and, and he was I basically mean, like press box material while the season was on the line in the second round. And I got no problem with him and, taking swings if basically it works but, out sometimes. But, I got and, no problem with that. I would rather him do that. You've got a swing and miss I sometimes would, to hit home runs. But, but, but you can't say the thing you said about talent evaluation and them being so deep and this and this because he's been missing a lot, man. I mean, he's, well, he's, he's the, missed. He's the, missed. Reason, the reason Molson wasn't good, he just wasn't good in the system. Well, yeah, he, but, he just showed up and wasn't good in the system. I'm saying, but look at Charlie Coyle. Charlie Coyle isn't a 20 goal scorer. He's not a top six guy. Not to say that he's not talented, but but the Brett Burns trade looks like garbage when you have nothing to show for it in the second round pick. I mean, you kind of do because it was part of the Pominville trade. Plus, he was going to leave. Plus, he was going to leave. So, But you, your assets coming back are, are uh, uh, a lesser version of Charlie Coyle because he, he's probably looking like a guy that's going to be a depth third-line guy. Do, do we see Charlie Coyle getting better still, though? I mean, I know he's... Could, could he get better? Yes. Is he young. ever going to be a 20-goal scorer sniper type at the NHL level? No. No, no, no. It, no can not, can he be a serviceable? But that's no, not his style. Man. He's a power that's forward. Style, yeah. but he's a power forward well, all day. But, but, even, but even still, as a power forward... Power he, forwards can score 20. He, he could, but he's not. He hasn't. And he probably won't. No, I'm not saying he will. Yeah, and and so and then the other kid in that trade is 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 Zach Phillips, who is a complete bust, and who is the cancer of the organization prospect wise, because he's a guy that you take in the first round, and he has the talent. It's the work that he needs to put in on his skating, on his ability to contribute in the defensive end, and when it comes time for call ups, you're calling up a seventh round pick in in, in uh, Tyler Gravowick. Not your first round pick from the Burns trade, and this is a guy that Flair and and Fletcher selected in the first round when they could have taken other guys. Yeah, I'm saying, but beyond that, I'm saying you, got, you got you got nope. uh, you got there's chinks in the armor. I'm, nope. That's all. Jonas Brodine, who I was present at that draft, and I'm like, who the f is yeah. this clown? That and was then, a really good pick. Now what happened? Yeah, yeah. Jason Zucker, no namer. Howla, if he plays to his potential, steal at seventh round. Never forget the Niederreiter trade. Niederreiter trade. Never forget that trade. There is so much more that you can see as far as talent evaluation on the squad compared to what it was prior to Mm -hmm. Chucky coming in here and bringing Brett with him. Sure. But, I mean, mean, there's other teams that draft. I mean, look look at the the way Detroit drafts. Well, Gustav Nyquist, they're one of Thomas the best Tatar, ever. and, and these, these are late 20s. Look at the, these look, are late 20s Look picks. at Edmonton. Edmonton Anthony, Edmonton. Anthony Mantha. Edmonton drafts high all the time, and they're, yeah. do, they're dog shit. Yeah, sure. they are. I mean, yeah. if you're talking about talent evaluation, it's just on paper. Yeah. I mean, my God, that that uh, kid from uh, Sarnia, I mean, he was supposed to be. You're talking about Niall Yakubov. Yeah, Niall Yakubov. I mean, he was supposed to be like the stud of that draft. Sure. Dog shit. Dog I get, shit, cancer in the locker room, problem with the agent. He's a mess. This current group, this current group. Minnesota it, would destroy him. This current Is group, that the kid who always went to his knees when he scored yes. and pissed everybody off yes. and they finally had to stop doing it? Yes, and the agent is uh, uh, Igor. Uh, Igor. He's, a, he's a former NHLer, nah. Russian, who um, kind of uh, is hell? his mouthpiece Mouth with regard to like. Uh, not liking what the coach's role was, and okay. them not letting him be who he wants to be. Yakupov's agent? Yeah. Did you say? Oh, they said Asian. I'm like an Asian named Igor. That's why I got. <laughs> that's why I got the crazy looks. I thought agent is like a nationally. Said, I, thought said, 
That's what he said Asian. But I mean, beyond beyond like Everly, I mean, they've had some oh. pretty some pretty disastrous. <laughs> but Asian I mean, but Igor. they picked up they picked up Schultz, and I mean, they, everybody thought Schultz was this collegiate player that was going to be fabulous. Yeah, and yeah. he hasn't done anything. No, but no. I mean, besides, that might be, that I, I might be the was, system. But who knows? Besides this current young group of young players, which which is good, right? But they haven't completely become NHL superstars, any of them, right? That mm-hmm. they're pretty talent bankrupt in the system. So you have. Uh, you have uh, Alex Tuck at at Boston College. You have Bell Pedio. You have um, you have Lu- Lucia, who's at Notre Dame, having a really good season. I'm gonna see him next weekend. You, you have you have a couple kids in the pipeline, but at the AHL level, you're pretty talent bankrupt, and and that's because of some trades. But that's also because there's some kids that haven't worked out, and and Fletcher, this next generation of kids, hasn't worked out for Fletcher and Flair, and there there is. Ch- there's just chinks in the armor with with regard to their their evaluation of players, and that and that's what I'm saying. So now going forward, right? They they should add a guy like Bergenheim to this roster. They should add a secondary guy, and then Yo has to make sure that these lines complement each other. You can't have a bunch of tiny players playing on a line against uh, any of these teams in the Central Division because the Blues will beat will the crap out we of are, us. We are fairly small. I mean, we, we are, are fairly yep. small, and yep. I I've, I've actually. All right, we're back from our technical glitch, a.k.a. Tony Dean unplugging us from the wall. Hey, that's it's like Tony Dean unplugged. <laughs> Puppy. Oh, Tony. Way to go, Tony. Way to go. Hey, the good Way news to is fucking go, Tony. I mean, you can't unplug the fish fry. That's you've, got, sure. you've got to have electricity to run the show. I'm always proud of myself. Stop the if that makes you feel what, what, what amazed me is how long it took us to get you to plug it back in. I mean, it was like, he didn't realize what he did forever. <laughs> well, anyway, long story short, we're just going to wrap this up here. It is, it is time to, to, to get out of here. We're going to piece this whole thing together later. Uh, so, guys, uh, closing thoughts. They're at Calgary. Then they go to Edmonton. Come home for a couple of games. Dallas uh, being the first, and I believe Colorado. Who knows the second game after Dallas on the homestand? Is it Colorado? I think it is, actually. But uh, nonetheless, uh, just a quick quick outlook. Uh, the squad, just a couple, couple, two, three points out of a playoff spot as we speak. Um, just just uh, closing thoughts, quick outlook back, on what you're We're back with the Oilers on Tuesday oh, again. okay, my bad. So, hey, you can get Kemper in there twice. There you go. <laughs> so I, He's got to win one of them. Closing not, thoughts, gentlemen. Not, not only does this team need to play uh, next to flawless hockey and win their games, but they need uh, other teams to lose. I mean, that... But besides, good regulation. besides that swing last night with with them losing to Vancouver, everything bad that could happen to cause them right to fall. Though. They're still right there. Don't it's be one, such a doomsday. No, it's I mean, one, one game. But I mean, yeah, if, if it, it was it was just a bad night. I mean, that, that it was a culmination of a bad night. And Cal- they're still only a couple points out of a playoff. Spot. Calgary comes back against uh, Boston. You, it uh, was the worst night you could have yes. at this point in the season. I mean, and, it's not and, the end of the season. And but. that Vancouver team. Is garbage. That Vancouver team is garbage. I hate Vancouver. Back, back to the you know the Northwest Division days, anyways. But you're giving away points to that team that didn't play better than you. I mean, I, that was I, a garbage. I'm, hold on, I'm gonna, they're not garbage. I mean, they're they're not going to be in the position they're in standings wise if they were if they were you know the likes of Edmonton and and Arizona and you know Carolina. I mean, they're not that bad. I mean. They're, and they play us well, and they play they play us against our weaknesses as far as size and intimidation. I mean, they are not a they are not a bad team. They still have you know the scary looking Sedins, and they still have I mean they they have some some talent in their roster as well as they have you know no, the Horvat kid. Is they good. have a good goaltender. I mean, so when he plays well, Ryan Miller is a good goaltender. Don't you like Bo Horvat on the fact that his name is remarkably close to your former goaltender uh, Rick Horvat? I, I like I like Horvat. You remember Horvat for him, Murray? Can I have Murray goaltender? Rick, you, how could you not remember him? You're a Hill Murray guy. Or my cousin, Fuzzy. Hill, uh, Rick Horvath was a goaltender that got victimized by the great Burnsville teams of the mid-'80s, the Scott Bloom squads. Well, b- well, I was like, what, four or five? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, down there pounding on the glass, probably asking if I can have nachos. I mean, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or hitting on the cheerleaders or something. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. All right, that's going to do it. We're done. Thanks to Garris for hosting us tonight. That's how we're going to end it? Yeah, <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a Rick Horvath, Scott Bloom Kevin Gorg reference. Kevin Gorg was the goaltender for Burnsville. Uh, op- opposite of Horvath. I'm unplugging the board this, this again. Means, this means nothing to <laughs> any of you guys, does it? The, the 80s, the 80s were great in high school hockey. True. Come on. All right, we're done. Early 90s, too.